Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us for TransferCon Volume 2. Um, my name is Natalie Para, and I'm a counselor at the Transfer Center, and we have here with us Ms. Joy Fisher, who is one of our amazing general counselors. Thank you, Natalie. I'm happy to join you. Happy Transfer 101 workshop this, today. We're glad you're here. Yay, thank you. And whether you're joining us live or on Instagram TV or through YouTube, we appreciate you for taking time out of your day to learn about Transfer Center um, and Transfer 101. So we are very grateful to have you here with us. So we'll go ahead and get started um, with our agenda. Um, Ms. Fisher is going to go over the first half of these um, slides on our workshop, and then I'll be going over the second half. So go ahead, Ms. Fisher. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Welcome, everyone. Uh, both Natalie and I are full-time counselors here at Harbor College, and so you can reach out to us or any of our um, adjunct counselor, um, counselor colleagues anytime you have questions about what we go over this today. Uh, because uh, of being respectful of your time, this is an intro, uh, Transfer 101. Uh, um, we'll be talking about defining transfer, talking about the Cal States and the UCs, transfer requirements in general, using the assist.org website, UC TAG, which stands for Transfer Admission Guarantee, then Natalie will pick up with the um, historically black colleges and universities, private universities, out of state transfer, and WUI, and online university transfer. Thank you, Ms. Fisher, and we'll mm -hmm. go ahead and get started. So we, when we talk about transfer, we mean that you are leaving a community college like Harbor College and that the units from Harbor or any other community college will go with you and um, count as the first two years of school. Then you leave Harbor, hopefully with an associate degree, and you transfer into a university as a junior. So at Harbor College, you're completing 60 units the freshman year and the sophomore year, and you enter the university as an upper division student called at a, as a junior. There at the university, you complete your junior year and your senior year, and you graduate with your bachelor's degree. Just like at Harbor College, where it can take more than two years to complete 60 units, the same is true at a university. It can take more than the two years, that's why we say two to three years after transfer in order to earn your uh, bachelor's degree. On the right hand side of your screen, you see some of the names of universities that are options for you to transfer to. Putting it all together at Harbor College is like um, building a puzzle. That puzzle is made up of preparation for whatever your major is. Whatever you will earn your bachelor's degree in, in, we call that your major. And we want to make sure that you complete your major requirements at Harbor College, plus the general education requirements. That's the second part of the piece of the puzzle, the general education requirements for your university. And occasionally you will need to take electives in order to reach the magic number of 60, 60 transferable units. Um, so you see the major requirements, the general ed requirements and the electives, yes. How many of you have seen this uh, green sheet before? You seen this green CSU general ed sheet? Bravo, thank you for the thumbs up. I see it, great. This is the pattern of general education uh, that students take when they know that they are going to go to a California State University, one of the 23 campuses in the CSU system. And when we talk about this green sheet of paper, we also talk about the golden four. The golden four are the communications, the oral communications in A1, English 101 in A2, 
a, a, a critical thinking requirement in area A3, and the math, the transferable math from area B4, the golden four. I mentioned that there are 23 campuses in the CSU system. There are only 10 campuses in the UC system. Most Cal States are on the, on the semester system as opposed to the UCs with most of them being on the quarter system. Uh, the tuition, you can see the tuition is in the $6,000, $7,000 per year range. It just so happens that for students who receive financial aid, that tuition is nearly entirely covered by the Pell Grant, if you qualify for the Pell Grant, which is a form of federal financial aid. The UCs, on the other hand, are just about double the cost of a Cal State. They, their, their tuition is just a little bit uh, different. In order to enter a California State University, a non-impacted Cal State, the minimum is a 2.0 grade point average. You can follow either the green CSU general ed sheet or a form we're going to talk about in a moment called the IGETC. And some of the Cal States you and I refer to as Cal State Dominguez Hills, Cal State Long Beach, San Diego State, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, Cal Poly Pomona, and so on. Cal State Fullerton. And backing up onto the UC side, the University of California has a minimum of a 2.4 GPA uh, required, but you'll want to aim much higher than that to be competitive to getting into one of the 10 UC campuses. And you would follow the IGETC, which is on usually on pink paper. Uh, some of you may have the IGETC already. And the UCs include UCLA, UC Berkeley, UC Santa Cruz, UC San Diego, UC Riverside, and so on. Harbor College offers these associate degrees for transfer. If you see your major listed under either the Associate in Arts for Transfer or the Associate in Science for Transfer, if your major is listed there, that's called a degree with a guarantee, a degree with a guarantee. There are many benefits to doing that. It matches best with the um, uh, undergraduate preparation across the state. So there's that degree with a guarantee. Uh, it is in, in place right now with the California State University. We, we're not, I'm not sure when the UCs will get on board with that. There's nothing wrong with the fact that you have an associate degree for transfer and you're going to a UC. It's just there is this degree with a guarantee in place for a Cal State. You get a 0.1 boost of your grade point average. So let's imagine here at Harbor College, you have a 3.2 grade point average and you get the associate degree for transfer in business administration. Right away, the Cal States put a 0.1 boost of your, onto your GPA, making it like a 3.3 grade point average. Um, now there are, if you're, you can see some of the other um, information here. So the, um, a word that you're going to hear or words that you're going to hear is talking about whether a university is impacted or non-impacted. And impacted majors or impacted campuses receive many more applications they, than they could possibly accommodate from students. Um, so they get, they call themselves impacted like, whoa, we're really full here. And they go to different criteria to decide which students to admit. When you have an associate degree for transfer and you're applying to an impacted school, you've got the uh, outside of your area, our, like our local area is Cal State Dominguez Hills. So if you're applying to a Cal State outside of the local area, you get the 0.1 boost. If it's an impacted Cal State, but you're a non-impacted major, you get a 0.2 bump for admissions decisions. And the, as I mentioned, the associate degrees for transfer pair well with UC transfer 
and they work great for historically black college and university transfer. And um, occasionally these uh, last, the, this last point is um, very interesting to find out that your associate degree uh, for transfer can count as preparation for the major, like as a match at many, for many different majors. We've got breakout sessions, workshops on ADTs too. So come to those as well. I hope, I hope you will. Uh, for the year, this, this school year, 2021 to uh, 2020 to 2021, these um, seventh campuses are impacted. San Luis Obispo, Fresno, Fullerton, Long Beach, Cal State LA, San Diego State, and San Jose State. Have you used assist.org? Anybody used assist.org yet? I have. Yay, bravo. I'm happy to hear that. Great, thank you both, Stephanie and Sylvia. Thank you, wonderful. This is like, like the greatest thing since sliced bread, if you like sliced bread. Um, you indicate this, the academic year, the college or university, in this case, you see LA Harbor College right there, and where you want to transfer to. And then you view the agreements, and you click on your major, and you can see exactly what, in this case, what Cal State Long Beach would like you to take at Harbor College. They actually say the exact names of the classes, now, Cal State Long Beach, being in the, this example, there are two pieces of the puzzle. One is you can see psychology at the top, and that snapshot just of, with the bright gold uh, header is from what's called um, uh, major specific criteria. For Cal State Long Beach, we always have to look at the major specific criteria to make sure that you are admissible. And then below, you see the snapshot, it says psychology. On the left is the Cal State Long Beach class, and on the right is the equivalent LA Harbor College class. In this case, Psychology 1 is called Psychology 100 at Cal State Long Beach. It's great, you can match up classes. Here's the pink sheet. We call this the IGETSI for short, the Intersegmental General Education Transfer Curriculum. IGETSI for short. Now usually this IGETSI is 13 classes, 13 different general ed classes. The green sheet are 15 classes. But we refer to this, um, and, and you can see all the different classes in there. There is also a way to follow um, the seven course pattern for um, uh, like as part of a transfer pathway for a UC transfer. Um, I don't know if you know uh, whether you plan to go to a UC, but those of you who are here, if you're planning to attend a UC campus, our next slide is going to show you the UC pathways. UC transfer pathways are amazing. These, I think there are 20 of them here, anthropology, biochemistry, biology, and so on. If this is, if, you're, if you see your major here, there is a pathway already built for you to make, um, seamless, tran to make seamless transfer possible for you. And it allows you to, do, to use the seven course pattern. It's like an adapted version of the IGETSI. I hope this is making sense. So um, to enhance your transfer to a U, to make it possible to transfer, transfer to a UC campus, you can follow the pathway that we have listed. You can do a TAG agreement, transfer admission guarantee. Uh, you do it a year before you're ready, to, when you've completed approximately 30 units. Is that right, Natalie? Is it 24 units or 30 units? 30 transferable UC units. 30, thank you. 30 
you have to have 30 transferable units in order to do a tag. So if you take 12 units each semester, you'd need to make up some units in your first year, either in winter and summer, to bring you to the uh, magic 30 unit number. Uh, you apply to UC campuses in the month of November prior to fall transfer. And you can see that the pathway in, includes 60 transferable UC transferable units. The seven course pattern all has to be done by the end of the spring in order for you to enter the UC campus by the fall. Um, and you are kind of, uh, you do need to follow the transfer admission guarantee. And then you, uh, it says reap the benefits of UC admission and transfer. And it's great. <laughs> Uh, this is um, an example of one of the UC pathways. This is the history major pathway. And you can see on the left hand side, it, uh, well, the top talks about um, how this all works. There's LA Harbor College. So this is specific information to you being a Harbor student. And um, it has what is expected in the pathway. There's where you select the major and it matches up the classes at Harbor College. Um, this is updated frequently, so um, you can always double check with what we see, what we see on assist, like the new information on assist has just, it is popping up every time we turn it on. Very good. Transfer admissions guarantees. If you apply in September, you have to have completed 30 UC transferable units by that time, have a 3.0 GPA or higher, be done with English 101, 102, and transferable math by the required term based on the university, and check with the individual campuses for requirements. Uh, we do have uh, workshops coming up on TAG uh, uh, this week for TransferCon. Yeah. And you can tag to one, two, three, four, five, six of these, six of the 10 UC campuses. It's nice, you don't have to worry. You know, when you have a transfer admission guarantee, you're not like stressing out going, oh my gosh, it's the springtime. Will I get into my school or not? <laughs> um, now, the University of California has what's called um, uh, uh, high unit limits. They really would like students like yourselves to get to select a major, get on that path, and move through the community college. And when you change majors while you're at Harbor or collect too many units, they call that having too many units, high units. You can see on the campuses on the left side, Berkeley, Davis, Irvine, LA, and whether or not they will or will not admit you if you go over the high unit limit. So for example, our closest, well, our closest UC, UCLA, um, once you hit 86.5 semester units uh, or more, you're considered having a high unit, being a high unit applicant. And they do not admit high unit juniors nor high unit seniors. So we, we wanna keep you on, on track, get where you're going. Um, there's some, um, specific uh, information uh, notes on the side here as well about AP scores do not hinder you and um, but it does apply to a student with a combination of both university work done prior to Harbor or after Harbor oh, yeah actually it's kind of hard to bounce back there Natalie Thank you so much, Ms. Fisher. Um, Ms. Fisher is so passionate about serving our students and um, I really appreciate her being able to take care of those slides for us. And it sounds like everybody really enjoyed her energy. So thank you, Ms. Fisher. 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and continue where she left off. So the next topic that we're gonna be discussing are the HBCUs, which are our wonderful historically black colleges and universities. There are 37 participating HBCUs for students to choose from, and they do have agreements with our California Community College students, that includes you. So students are guaranteed admission with junior standing to participating HBCUs by completing either IGETC, which is the pink sheet, or the CSUGE sheet. Some campuses will tell you specifically choose one or the other, but for the most part, it's either or. And then transfer level associate degree, so our ADT, like Ms. Fisher mentioned, they pair extremely well with the HBCUs. They are very friendly with our ADTs. You also wanna have a 2.5 or higher GPA. Students can also be admitted with the 30 or more transferable units and a 2.5 or higher GPA. Um, as well. So if you were to get that degree, the associate degree for transfer, that would be the 60 units. So they will accept you with less than 60 at 30 or more. However, sometimes students aren't comfortable with applying with fewer than 60 just because a lot of the times they will ask for your high school records. Some students are comfortable and they want to go ahead and transfer early, but for some students, they'd rather only um, be um, reviewed as an applicant based on their college coursework. And that's when it would be great to do the ADT um, and get those 60 units in so that way they can have a full review of your success as a college student with us at Harvard. And then just to give you an example, Lincoln University of Missouri will offer in-state tuition for California community college students who transfer. And the wonderful thing about these campuses is that they're located throughout the United States. A lot of them are predominantly in the South. Um, so students who have that, um, you know, desire to it's go on a really great college adventure and move and explore new geographic locations in the U.S. Um, this is a great fit for these students who have that um, adventurous side of them or maybe you haven't had that adventurous side before, but you're really interested in exploring that, I definitely encourage you to do your homework and research on these campuses because they're very special. They have an extremely rich history and there is a lot of beautiful, special college traditions traditions embedded at these campuses that I would say make them stand out as being so unique and um, just a great experience for students. Beyonce, actually, it was her dream to go to an HBCU for college. That was one of her biggest dreams in life. She talked about in her next Netflix documentary, but she wasn't able to go because she had to focus on her music career. So these universities, like I said before, are very special and they attract people from all over the country because of their rich historical background and traditions. So going over the HBCUs and affordability, right? Because a lot of our students wonder, can I afford an HBCU? Can I afford to move out of state? This is one of those special times in your life where you can pack up and move out of state and it is affordable. So in the case of, for example, Alcorn State University, they are allowing students to attend for the in-state tuition rate of $7,290. That is quite comparable to Cal State Long Beach. A little bit more expensive, but you get to go on a great adventure. Um, Florida Memorial University charges $12,800 to our California Community College students, which is actually cheaper than UC Irvine even, which charges $15,797. So for students who want to go ahead and give it a try to apply to the HBCUs, I think that it doesn't hurt to apply if that's something that you're interested in. You can review the financial package, see how it looks, compare it to Long Beach, compare it to UC Irvine or any other campuses that you apply to, and you can make the best decision for yourself but like it says, the HBCUs are comparable in cost to the UCs and the Cal States and competitive in cost for that matter. And you will receive that in-state tuition to many of the HBCU campuses, which we'll go over in an upcoming slide. So the following HBCU campuses offer in-state tuition to California community college students, including you. Um, this includes Lincoln University, uh, University of Missouri, Grambling State University, Alcorn State University, Harris Stowe State University, Mississippi Valley State University, Southern University at New Orleans, Southern University at A&M, 
Um, and then the link here actually gives all the specific re agreements regarding the HBCU. So you do want to check, let's say myself, I really want to move to Louisiana because that's been a dream of mine. That's when I want to take a look at this link here, which is cccTransfer.org slash HBCU hyphen colleges. So if you want to take a screenshot of that or write it down really quickly, this is where you want to start doing your research on which campuses you think might be a really good fit for you. You can start by looking at what state you'd like to move into or by your major, but a counselor like myself or Ms. Fisher or any counselor for that matter, we're glad to help you do some research and narrow down the campuses you're interested. Some students will say, like, let's say I had, I do have cousins that live in South Carolina, let's say, for example. So I might want to say, okay, I'll contact Teresa and see which one is closest to her. And then from there, I can live with Teresa and drive to the campus close by. So that's something that we definitely encourage our students to start doing is their homework so they can plan it out really nicely. The next one we're going to be talking about is private university transfer. So the following campuses are regionally accredited private universities that students are commonly transfer interested in transferring to from Harbor College. Uh, give me one moment. Let me go backwards. So some examples include University of Southern California, also known as USC. Loyola Marymount University, Marymount California University, which is actually close by in Palos Verdes, West Coast University, which is very common for my nursing students, um, Biola University, Azusa Pacific University, University of Laverne, Chapman University, um, the big research division one schools, Stanford University and Harvard University, and many more. So there are a number of private universities in state, out of state that students have interest in transferring to. Um, requirements do vary by campus, so we'll go into that just a little bit. Um, admission requirements, like I said before, do vary by campuses. So not all campuses require the 60 transferable units of students, which some students say, yay, awesome, that's perfect for me. Um, but you do also want to keep in mind that they may ask for your high school record. So they might, may ask for AP scores, SAT scores, high school grades, right? And if you're comfortable being evaluated, evaluated based on your high school completion, um, that's perfect. If you feel like that's not something that you want and you want to be evaluated based exclusively on your college performance, I completely understand. So whatever feels more comfortable to you. I also want to share that when you transfer with 60 units, you're also optimizing the amount of money that you save. Because if you transfer with less than 60 units, you'll be having to pay for sophomore year, junior year, and senior year, which is three years worth of tuition. When you're a student at Harbor College, a lot of our students do qualify for financial aid, um, Board of Governors fee waiver, just to name a couple. And that can offset the cost and save you thousands of dollars in tuition in the long run. For some students, they don't mind, they'll pay the extra. For some students, they also have financial considerations that they want to keep track of as well. So in my opinion, um, there isn't really a wrong way to go about whether you wanna transfer before hitting 60 units or after, but you do have the advantage when you do the 60 units is that you would be eligible for Cal State application CS, um, UC application, and then you sprinkle in the private universities you want to transfer to, the HBCUs, and then you get to choose from all of those different schools and save the optimal amount of money. And you have all those admission letters in front of you and you get to pick the best one for you instead of only applying to certain schools that accept at less than 60 earlier on. Um, additionally, general education does vary by campus. So for example, USC has their own GE pattern, GE pattern that they follow, which is called the USC GE. LMU has the core, which is spe specifically for LMU, and that is their general education pattern that they follow. Some campuses, they'll accept IGETC. Some campuses will even accept CSU GE. So it all depends on the campus, and that's why it's important to see a counselor. Um, I'm glad to do the research for you um, and define, and to, in identifying the best GE pattern for you to follow to help you plan based on the universities that you want to transfer to. Additionally, major prep can overlap between private and UC Cal State campuses. So like Ms. Fisher had brought up before, the history transfer pathway for UCs overlaps really nicely with our associate degree for transfer in history. 
And for a student who wants to be a history major and apply to USC and LMU, we could see if there is major prep requirements. And then normally a lot of the times we will find at least one class that overlaps. So that's something that we also help our students do, um, particularly in the transfer center is plan for multiple university types for transfer and develop your ed plan based on the ability to apply to various types of schools. And like I said, students can absolutely plan for and apply to both private and public universities. So you don't have to choose one or the other. And then just to go over a little bit, the private and out-of-state universities accepting IGETSI. This includes Biola, Cal Arts, which Walt, Walt Disney founded, Cal Lutheran, um, Chapman, Concordia, Hawaii Pacific. If you wanna go to Hawaii, Holy Names College, National University, Northern Arizona University, Notre Dame de Namur, um, formerly College of Notre Dame, St. Mary's College of California, Scripps College, University of Laverne, University of Northern Colorado, University of San Francisco, University of the Pacific, University of the West, and Woodbury University. So as you can see, a number of universities are IGETC friendly. And with that being said, um, IGETC can be a really good option for you if you have that interest in UCs. Cal States, out of state, in state, private, right? So we can definitely find a plan that works for you that meets all of your needs. So an example of a private university general education pattern that I wanted to share with you is the USCGE. So the USCGE overlaps really nicely with IGETSI and the CSU GE as well. So a lot of my students who wanna to go to UC, US, USC We'll look at the USCGE pattern and we'll cross reference and match it up with IGETSI or CSUGE as much as possible to avoid over planning and like stacking on multiple GEs for different schools. So there are core literacies which include arts, life sciences, physical sciences, quantitative re reasoning, which is math, and two courses in humanistic inquiry and social analysis. So that sounds a lot like IGETSI and CSUGE, where it's arts and humanities. Um, the sciences section, quantitative reasoning, uh, which is the math, and then the humanistic inquiry a lot of times overlaps with humanities and social and behavioral sciences overlaps quite often with social analysis. There's also the two courses in global perspectives, which um, for a lot of students, it's the diverse world class and a class in historical foundations. Um, another thing is with the USC general education pattern, you can be missing two classes from the GE list at USC because it does force you to take two of those classes at USC once you transfer. So as you can see, it says here, specifically on this page too, transfer students must complete two GE courses at USC Dornsheim College from among the six core literacy categories, which means that if you do the entire list before you transfer, USC is gonna make you go ahead and take two classes anyway, and they're not gonna count two from the list. So it's okay to be missing two classes from USC. Is it okay to miss two classes from IGETC? No, it's not okay. And it's not okay to miss two classes from CSUGE either. You wanna finish the whole thing for CSUGE or the green sheet. You wanna finish the whole thing for IGETC, but USC, it's okay to miss two classes. So if you see something on the USC list that you can't overlap with IGETC or CSUGE, it's okay. We can still plan everything out and optimize your transfer. So the next section is out of state transfer and WUI, which is honestly one of the coolest things that I've ever seen um, that I got to learn about as a counselor. So WUI is the Western Undergraduate Exchange and it is just the perfect option for students who want to have that out-of-state university adventure in a new place. What it is, is it's a special agreement between all of our neighboring states on the West Coast, essentially. So the Dakotas, Montana, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, Alaska, Hawaii, um, a lot of these middle states here, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Nevada, Wyoming, um, and then even the Northern Mariana Islands and Guam, but all of these universities within these states that are public, they accept our California students and give them reduced tuition. So if you want, let's say myself, I'm from California and I really wanna to go to Arizona for school. 
I will receive a lower reduced tuition rate through WUI compared to a student from New York who wants to go to Arizona for school. So they give priority in um, giving the California students the opportunity to transfer to these schools with a reduced tuition rate. So that's the wonderful thing about this program. Some examples of the schools include Arizona State University for multiple campuses, University of Nevada, Reno, University of New Mexico, University of Hawaii, which includes multiple campuses in Hawaii. Um, and each campus determines which majors are eligible for, to participate in WUI. Some campuses accept all majors. Some campuses say um, only this amount of majors. So it does vary based on campus, but there are 74 universities that participate in WUI. So if you have interest in any of these um, states and transferring to go to school out in a new location, WUI could be a wonderful option for you. And we're just gonna look at the WUI savings comparison really quickly together. So as you can see, these are all campuses that have WUI for students. So for example, we have University of Nevada, Reno, WUI students, so a student from California who uses the WUI scholarship to attend there, they pay $10,485 annually, whereas a resident of Nevada would pay $6,990. Non-resident, so the New York student, for example, would pay $22,041 a year. So through WUI, a California student would be saving $11,556. Compared to Long Beach and Irvine, that's right in between in terms of affordability. The next one, University of Arizona, WUI students pay $11,299 a year. Resident tuition in Arizona is $6,990 and non-residents pay $35,326. So the New York student again, for example, would be paying this much. So through WUI, a California student would be saving $18,000 a year. And then of course, uh, just one more exciting one, um, University of Hawaii at Manoa, students um, through WUI pay $16,956, whereas a student um, who is a resident of Hawaii would pay $11,304, and non-residents pay $33,336 annually. So through WUI, you'd be saving $16,380 annually, so it is such a wonderful savings opportunity for students who want to go on that adventure. As you can see, Hawaii is a little more expensive than UCs. So for some students, that's totally justifiable because you get to be in Hawaii every day. Um, Arizona is right between Long Beach and UC Irvine, just like University of Nevada, Reno. Um, and the WUI tuition is, like I said before, comparable to the public California universities and is a great option for students wanting that a way to college experience. I totally understand if that's you. Um, right now, of course, we're going through the distance learning and some states they're having in, in class instruction, right? So it depends. My hope is that we have been able to move past this by the time it is your time to transfer, but it is always just a great idea to have some options available for you. So how do I know if I'm eligible for WUI? That's a question that a lot of students have. So what happens is you can go to this website, wuisavingsfinder.wiche.edu. So if you wanna take a picture of it really quick or write it down, totally fine with me. But when you click on it, you're gonna to go to the College Savings Finder and you can search any way you want to find out if your major qualifies, right? So I'll use myself, for example, when I was a student in college, I was a communication major. So I personally would want to only look for schools with WUI that accept communication major, so I can search by major. So I would type in communication right here. And what appears are 81 results for communication major. So for example, it'll go in alphabetical order, but it'll show me first University of Alaska at Fairbanks, $10,035 in tuition for WUI. So, it will show you a number of campuses. This is ASU Polytechnic Campus, ASU West Campus, so Arizona State. And it'll show you here, this one is in Mesa, Arizona. This one is in Phoenix, Arizona. This may be a community college, Central Arizona College, because as you can see, the tuition rate is noticeably lower than the others, right? So that could be a sign. Um, I'm not quite so familiar with the Arizona area. I haven't been to Arizona before, so I can't promise you that it is a community college, but that would be something that I would, you know, 
look at with you and help you determine. This one deliberately says Chandler Gilbert Community College. So we know for this one, that low cost rate is because it's a community college. Like I said, community colleges are wonderfully affordable for students, but in your case, we're gonna be looking at university bachelor programs. And um, moving forward, uh, the next thing we're gonna discuss is online university transfer, which is becoming an increasingly popular option for students. Tuition rates can also be very affordable and comparable to UCs and Cal States, depending on the campus that you're looking at. Um, and it can be an option that's really great for our Harbor College nursing program graduates who are looking for BSN programs because a lot of BSN programs have online university um, options for students. So some popular campuses that students have interested, interest in transferring to for online university include Western Governors University, which is a small private university based in Utah. Um, there's also Arizona State University Online, also known as ASU Online. A lot of my students who work at Starbucks find that Starbucks does supplement their tuition with ASU Online as they have a partnership. And then there's another option, Southern, Uni Southern New Hampshire University, SNHU, um, that has an online program as well for our students. So some major key takeaways from the online bachelor's degree programs is you wanna be sure to do your research with the transfer center um, because we only want you applying to regionally accredited online universities. So we don't want you to apply to national universities, um, nationally accredited universities because the accreditation, um, that's not what um, we would want our students to do because in terms of accreditation, we want our students applying to regionally accredited schools. Harvard College is regionally accredited. USC, Cal State Long Beach, Dominguez Hills, UC Irvine, UC Berkeley, they're all regionally accredited schools. And even when you go to an online school, you would wanna to go to a regionally accredited university. Um, all majors are not always available um, for online university transfer. Some campuses cater more to working adults who are advancing in their career. So what that means is most of their degrees are gonna be related to teaching, nursing, IT, or business. Um, and for nursing, it's normally the post Harbor College nursing program, nursing students that wanna get their BSN is that they're catering more towards. Um, but there could, be, there could be options for you too. So an example um, of an online university would be Western Governors University, which provides a free application code for students of SPM 37. So if you type in that code, you would get the free application. So some of our students really love that um, because you don't lose anything by applying. You do spend your valuable time on the application. However, if you're okay with throwing in one free application to a program, um, I don't see why not if you wanna write that down. And their majors vary, but they include majors within the College of Business, Teachers College, College of IT, and College of Health Professions. This is an excellent option for our students who complete the Harbor College Nursing Program and want their BSN, if they want something a little different from um, the Cal States, and the tuition is comparable to the cost of the CSUs. And like I said before, they're a nonprofit private university based in Utah. Um, and then just to do a cost comparison for Western Governors University, for example, the tuition and fees, they do vary by major. They range from $6,690 to $11,850. Um, the cost of tuition at Long Beach is $6,834 and UC Irvine is $15,797. So it's right in between Long Beach and Irvine again, but um, it is, something that you know students may be interested in depending on their responsibilities and schedules it might work and the um, students who transfer from a california community college with an adt aa or as degree also can receive a two thousand dollar scholarship to western governors university so it can save you money too to transfer with the 60 units so with that being said, this concludes the recording segment of our workshop, just because I do want to end recording for the purpose of providing you confidential experience in asking your questions so we can answer them for you. So thank you so much for joining us, whether it was on YouTube or Instagram TV, and uh, we appreciate you being here with the Harbor College